Over the years, I've learned that children teach us some of the most valuable lessons in life, right? Like how you can tear something apart to find out what it's made of and know how it works. How to pick yourself up when you fall. They even teach us life's critical lessons like how to genuinely be happy. Sometimes, however, the lessons that children teach us are unexpected. Like the lesson I'm going to share with you today that I learned from a child named Chebo. See, Chebo is a smart, wonderful young man that likes to smile and make funny faces. But there's something else that Chebo likes, and that's school. But until he was 15 years old, Chebo was uncomfortable being in school because he was born with a condition called clubfoot. Now, with clubfoot, children are born with feet that are curved inwards, they're shaped like golf clubs, which makes it increasingly difficult for them to walk or to run long distances. If you neglect a clubfoot, the feet become permanently deformed, which, make, which is a source of further discomfort later on in life. And unfortunately for Chebo, it earned him a nickname in his community, the cursed child. Today, I'm going to tell you what children like Chebo can teach entrepreneurs. I will show you the benefits of learning these lessons. And I'll even show you what you can apply in your own life that Chebo applied through his clubfoot recovery journey. But first, let's talk about clubfoot. You see, one in 1,000 children worldwide is born with the condition. Now, while its causes are idiopathic, it's been linked to genetics and skeletal abnormalities. A clubfoot won't just go away because you've chosen to ignore it like Chewa's parents did. It needs treatment. And without treatment, the feet become permanently deformed and you need surgery to correct it. Now, what that surgery looks like is that they'll need to cut the foot and try and straighten it back into place. This can be excruciatingly painful to experience. And what's much more painful is the recovery process itself because it can take a long time depending on the type of surgery that is done and post-operative care among many other things. You need grit to go through this recovery process. Angela Duckworth defines grit as passion and perseverance for our long-term goals. She says grit is a better predictor of achievement than talent or intelligence. I think entrepreneurs are going to need a lot of grit post-pandemic because since the pandemic hit last year, startups have become an endangered species. Um, four out of every 10 startups is at a significant risk of running out of money. 72% of startups have, has a, have had massive reduction in their revenues and six out of every 10 has either laid off or reduced the salaries of their employees because times are indeed tough. And unfortunately, they're about to become tougher because out of every 10 startups, nine, unfortunately, might not make it. This is such a dire situation. When you think about it, it's, it's sad, really. But this is not the time to give up. Because what the pandemic has done is that in developing countries where people are predominantly poor, it threatens to put the lives of further 500 million people into poverty. And now more than ever, people in these vulnerable populations will not depend on their governments or market forces in order to survive. They will depend on the efforts of social entrepreneurs because social entrepreneurs have been in the forefront of the pandemic fighting some of the world's wickedest problems. According to the Schwab Foundation, social entrepreneurs have improved the lives of over 622 million people by providing solutions in health, in education, in water and sanitation, in environment, among many other um, solutions provided. And see, this is why we need social entrepreneurs, because the possibility of a world without them post-pandemic is something that is quite simply too ghastly for us to contemplate. But what will make the difference between the social entrepreneurs that succeed and those that don't, it's not their talent. It's not their intelligence. It's their passion, and their perseverance for their missions. It's their grit. And Chewa's example is such a good example of what it means to have grit because it's a, it was a journey of pain. It was a journey of patience. It was a journey of perseverance. But it later on turned out to be a journey of triumph through grit. You know, and I remember watching him recover and thinking to myself, this is such a tough kid because I, I wouldn't want to go through something like that myself. But little did I know that seeing that recovery was preparing me for something that I would later experience myself where I would need to use grit. In 2019, I decided to apply for a Achievement Scholarship. 
Now, the thing with Chibnin scholarships is that thousands of people apply for these scholarships every year across the world, and only between 1% to 2% are awarded the scholarship. Now, even though I believe I put in a brilliant application that year, I was one among the 98 to 99 percent that were good, but unfortunately not good enough. And I remember that rejection stunk so much and going through it and thinking to myself, I may as well just throw my dreams out the window. I was defeated. I was distraught. I, I gave up. And I remember telling myself I would not reapply because this is such a painful process to, to endure. But the next year, against my better judgment, um, I decided to throw in a fresh application. And out of the over 60,000 people that applied that year and the over 600 local applicants in Zambia, I became one of only 13 Zambians that were awarded the scholarship. In fact, I'm the only Zambian Chivnin scholar studying at the University of Sussex. See, that's grit. Grit is not about going through tough times in order to survive. It's about going through tough times in order to survive and then to thrive. In summary, what have I been talking about? I've been saying that the grit that children like Chewo show through their recovery journey is something that we all need if we're going to build back better post-pandemic. Because now more than ever, the world needs our solutions. So we need to re-examine the places where we failed. We need to go back to the doors that were closed for us and knock on them. And try again and again, and persevere and have passion for these goals until we achieve them. Because post-pandemic, the world is going to need every solution we can get. Now, I'll end this on a good note. I'm happy to tell you that Chewo did go back to school. He can walk, he can run, and he can play sports like all of the other kids in his neighborhood. In fact, he's no longer the community's cursed child. And rightly so, because his name, Ichewo, has such a positive meaning in Bemba. Um, in Bemba, it is a reference to the word of God. Thank you so much for listening today.